What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be on every episode. Your other host, as I like to think of it. Other, wait, we keep changing it. I thought you were co-host. Other host. Other, other, in other italics. Host. That's right. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> there's Ben and there's the other host. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, we're not even sitting next to each other. I'm off in the shadows. That is sort of what your business card is going to say. I'm perfectly okay with Ben Carlin, host. Jay Carlin, other host. In, in italics. A, in italics. <laughs> My person card, you like, mean. Yeah, it's your person card. You would need you would need both business cards to understand the italics and that it is different. Yeah. Because other hosts could just look like you just put your, your job title that way. But like when mine isn't in italics, right. then, you know, that's, that's when the context has been delivered. Exactly. So someone did point out that if you to 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 call up some feedback here. Okay. That we were talking about if you just had a the, essentially a business card, but just for personal use, like not as a business contact. That's what we came up with the person cards. Okay. But this is already a thing. I guess the uh, the the term for this is actually a calling card. A calling card. Which okay. I guess is the precursor to the modern day business card. I looked it up. On Wikipedia, and that's what it said. But to me, I don't like that. I like person card better. Because to me, calling card sounds like what a serial killer leaves on the body or something. So that was my exact thought. So (laughs) I I was going to say like the Joker in the Batman series. Like doesn't he leave like a Joker card? Like from a deck of cards like at the scene of the crime. That's that's his calling card. That's his calling card. Exactly. No phone number though. So kind of inconvenient. Not really that useful either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually, I've always thought that was super clever. The the Joker (laughs) from the deck of cards. I sort of love it. (laughs) It is pretty good it is pretty good yeah i like that um so yeah i'm sticking with person card person card no i think it's perfect and i think we will have them eventually eventually and they will be they will be cnc cut from from stainless steel Oh boy. And amazing. Have you looked into getting stainless steel person cards? I have I have looked into it before, like once upon a time. I think I've told you about this like on the on the first episode of the cast on the pop. And um I believe that they cost about five dollars per card. Ooh. So like if you were to buy like a stack of one hundred, which would be like a rather minimal order quantity for paper cards, you know, that's like eleven dollars. Right. It would be like five hundred dollars. Yikes. So yes, considerably more expensive. Uh uh, but also, I mean, like... So we'll have to have... At least three times as cool. So is my, the value there? <laughs> you tell me. In my mind, if we ever do this, these have to be like the holographic version. Like if you buy a stack of, you know, like if you buy a trading pack of something, of cards, like a booster pack, right. the you have you have certain odds of getting like the really rare card. Oh! In it. So like if you got it, yeah. Most most people would just get the regular, the regular person card, which would still be nicer than like a regular business card. It's a great person card. Yeah. 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 Above like, average. There's like a lottery of getting the stainless steel card. Oh, so you're the, like you, the rare one. So then we only have to order like 10. Yeah. Maybe there's like an ultra rare that's got like a diamond stud in it or something. What? A Who diamond? knows? Oh I'm just my thinking, gosh. I'm just thinking here. There is, guys, this podcast has been nothing but perfect for Jay's enthusiasm <laughs> and, and ridiculous ideas, which usually is my forte. Dude, maybe I needed the pop to funnel these ideas. Maybe. You, you needed like a place to put them. So much like the way that like our office is our landing zone for all of our like fandom related stuff. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so like we have we have tons of Harry Potter, Disney, Pixar, Marvel merch and decor. Mm hmm. None of it is at our houses. Right. None of it is on, on display in our homes. This but is, at our office, it's it's floor to ceiling. Absolutely. This has been, well, this is one of my issues before we really got into this section of YouTube or before we became like fandom YouTubers was that I would always go on to like thinkgeek.com or, you know, Hot Topic or FYE or wherever. And you'd see all these like super cool things. You're like, man, I really, I really want this. And most of the time I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't buy. But if I did, if I could convince myself that it was really cool enough and I would I would have the thing whatever it was and I wouldn't really have anywhere to put it which was its own problem it is and so yeah. this is that's one of the I think one of the per- so I want to know where like I guess some people have like a specific room in their house because you just put stuff in your own bedroom or whatever but you know my wife doesn't want a bunch of Funko Pops in our bedroom. Th- she didn't is... take any of my ideas. What? None of them? None. Oh my gosh. So uh, actually, for one, I love the idea that the pop is a place for you to bring your bad ideas because I feel like I've been holding down the fort all by myself. And I, now- I don't think these are bad ideas. Now we get to bond over bad ideas together, <laughs> Jay. Uh, okay, speaking of questionable ideas, uh, I think we normally start this this pop with a, uh, a corny joke. 
a corny joke, yeah. indeed. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me deliver one right to you. Let, let me so, hear it, Ben. Since this episode will be uh, ultimately wedding themed, even Ooh. though we haven't even touched on that at all, uh, today's today's um, corny joke is going to be in theme. Okay. Yes. Did you hear about the two spiders who got engaged? No, Ben. What about the two spiders who got engaged? I hear they met on the web. <laughs> Classic online dating joke, am I right? Uh, uh, like the spiders spin webs. Oh, uh, I thought yeah. it was like a because you wouldn't expect a spider to be on a computer. Right. Yes. That is. That is my interpretation <laughs> of that joke. <laughs> boy, boy, spiders on the internet. Don't inter don't Google it. Think about it. Right. I know. <laughs> the idea of spiders living inside of your keyboard is like the most upsetting thing that's happened to oh, me all week. Why would you even just say imagine that? like as you type and then like as you hit each in individual new unique key, you've rattled their cage People from underneath. Are gonna stop listening? They're listening because it's morbid curiosity, and the spiders emerge and they're black and hairy and terrifying. Man, I'm sorry for right. those of you driving to work right now that are now imagining spiders coming out of your air vents. Uh. <laughs> Wow. Wow. This took a dark turn. Indeed. It, but they're all friendly spiders. They met on the web. Exactly. It's they're so much engaged. better. They're, they're, getting... they're, they're, all, they're just going to the wedding. <laughs> they're, getting, they're all guests at one wedding. There you go. Yeah. But so your wedding, when people are listening to this, will have already happened. Yes. But as of recording, has not happened. So this coming weekend and for the following week uh we will be in disney world for in your wedding disney world my oh goodness. my yeah so so alice and i are having a a full-blown disney wedding uh and, and for a submission of background here so my my fiance actually owns a bridal store which is like a unique position for someone to be in as they enter the process of getting married because everything to her like certain things are cliches to all people when it comes to weddings right everything is cliche to her right because she owns a bridal store because she owns a bridal store and she's heard every story and one thing that i think like the that i was most self-conscious about after after proposing was the realization that everyone says the words when they see the ring for the first time oh my gosh he did so good <laughs> and, and like i remember when uh I, was, I remember being so impressed with you when you got engaged because I heard so many people expressing this sentiment to Beth. Right. And I'm like, look at Jago. He's so good. Did it. Turns out you're completely average. I'm completely average. Well, based on the idea that everybody says it all the time. Because, yeah. But they, but, but they meant it with yours, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Have you seen Beth's ring? I liked it. That's why I picked it out. <laughs> That is such a good reason. Yeah. When you, when you went to go buy the engagement ring, which for me ended up being like like my hobby for like three months, the, the time That's it took. The for most me. Ben Carlin thing you've ever said. I know, I know it is. <laughs> did did you did you enter into the world of the four C's? I did not. No. Not a pretty like I'm aware of them. It's like color, cut, clarity, and carrot. Mm, carrot. Yeah. Yes. The, that's the big one. That's the, <laughs> or the small one. Or the small depending one. on yeah. <laughs> Realistically, for most people, the small one. Yeah. yeah. Um no, yeah. So that's those are like the, the four characteristics of a diamond that right. when when I, I knew nothing about any of them or that there were even four C's prior to prior to the hunt beginning. Oh really? Yeah, no, I did not know. Oh, okay. I did not know. And then as I started doing research and and I was like, oh no. Oh no, this is going to be such a thing. It's going to be like, and, and I got sucked in so hard oh, to, to figuring out like the, just what the perfect blend of these elements mm -hmm. could possibly be. So let me ask you then, it sounds like already yes, but just for clarification, did Alice have any role in the picking out of the ring? No, 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 absolutely not. Yeah. So in it, in it took me, uh, it was actually a really funny thing. So going back to the idea of like everything being cliche, everybody gets it married around Christmas. Yeah. Like that's, that's like a very common thing. So mm -hmm. right now, as of recording this, it's like, uh, the last day of the year of 2019. And this is like her busy season right. because everybody just got rings and they're all like, I got to go try on a wedding gotta dress. Gotta go get a dress. Right. So everybody is, is currently like, sw like, you know, swarming to her store. So I decided like, I was like pretty sure that I was like, ready to go excited to get engaged in like October of 2018 and then I started doing like my research on all the ring related stuff right and then the problem was for one I was having so much fun picking out the ring I literally right. the most recent time that I started playing Diablo 2 I literally did it as an intentional con so that when Alice went to work all day on Saturdays I had some non-productive reason as to why I was not getting anything else done oh because so, you were looking for the ring because I was I was looking for the ring in Diablo 2 and in real life. In Diablo 2, yeah, the Stone of Jordan, obviously. One to all skills, you gotta have it. 
That's a or Bolkatho's wedding band. Oh, I arguably better. Argue I, people. Are, I was uh, yeah. The SOJ became like the currency, but Bolkatho's man BKs. I know BKs ring. BK's it, it had life steal. Yeah. Oh, Jeez, come on, guys. I'm, I guess I'm, it depended on your character class. It is alarming to me the number of times in just five episodes that Diablo 2 has already come up in this podcast. Honestly, it's not enough if you ask me. It's not enough. Anyway. Do we need like a whole like section of the podcast that's just Diablo 2? But the latest, the, the, yeah, the, the latest Diablo, Diablo 2 update. Diablo 2 what we should do from ben. is start a clan. <laughs> we can we can call it like the Colonel Clan. The Colonel and, Clan. And everybody will have KC before their name. Do you remember SF Bahamut? From back when I used to play? Yeah, because he would just give you all the stuff. And I was like, I don't, you, this was alarming to me is that any time throughout the course of the years that you have decided that you've gotten the itch to fire up the old Diablo 2 Lord once of every Destruction. Two, once every two years. Yeah, it is amazing to me how within hours you will have like a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By, like, random happenstance, this super experienced high-level player will just decide you're their charity case and, oh, I've got extra stuff. I need to clear my inventory. Here's lots of free godly stuff that I deemed one point not good enough for me. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. this was, this was like, the only reason. This is the only video game I've ever been good at. Right. And because social skills come into play. That's basically and it. Was, it. it was purely, like, and specifically, um online social skills so like i think uh one of the skills that I, I hardened really well in high school was i was massive on aol instant messenger that yes, was like were. my thing so i would like come home from like cross-country practice and i would get on aim and i would literally go through and open up like nine windows and i would have nine tiles going with nine full-blown conversations with people all at the same time and so i got very good at communicating tone i think through text i think so Th that was like that was like my skill so then when i was able to transfer that to the lovely world of Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, I was able to make friends like SF Bahamut. Yeah. Shout out. Wherever you are, man. I wish, I wish I could, I could, I don't even know what his real name was. I just Th knew him as SF thing. Bahamut. <clears throat> See, now even if he is a genuine listener, you'll have no way to confirm. I know. Like, like, oh my God, that was you? Popcorn culture? Now I'm going to be like heartbroken if somebody tweets me and they're like, Ben, I am SF Bahamut. Then you'll never know. And I'll be like, I'll have ruined it by saying those words out loud because surely someone will do it now. <laughs> what? Surely someone will. I guess they'd have to show us their character profile within Diablo 2. Oh, right? if they had that, if somebody had a screenshot of it, chances yeah. are they, I mean, I'd be right there because I was always right. playing with him. Right, yeah. Constantly. Whoever he was. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was, it, it goes back to a period of time where it was still something that mom was worried about, like internet stalkers, oh, which right. I, maybe, maybe is still a, a, a problem as of today. I don't think about it nearly as much as I did when I was like 14. Yeah. Where they're like, if you put your real name online, you're going to get killed. Right, right, yeah. right. So I do think eventually I told him my name was Ben. And to me, that was sort of like this like major reveal, Whoa. like to like let someone know my name. <laughs> it's um, so funny. This is again, like, I feel like we talked about this in the last episode. You so could have just easily lied about your real name. Yeah, my name's Kyle. <laughs> He's not going to know. I think his name was Kyle. I think it, no, I kid you not. Like wow. I could not have brought that name to my memory, but when you said it, it was like, wait a second. Could that be? Ben, I was SF Buhabit. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> nothing, would, nothing, nothing would blow more. my mind more than if it was my brother the whole time. Yeah. Oh my goodness yeah, gracious. I had people on running the account while I was watching you play, you know. That like, would be yeah. amazing. I would be so impressed and it I would want- It was not me. Okay. I'm not Kyle. <laughs> it was Kyle. <laughs> Could have been Kyle. Goodness gracious. Anyway, so where where do we 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 tangented from rings? That was that was that where we was the thing. So yes, back to wedding rings, weddings, Disney World, all that. Um, this so yeah. What is what is your strong opinion on this week thing about purchasing rings? Because I can tell you that for me, it always seemed strange whenever I talked to some to to a fiance to be, and she would say that she was picking out the ring in my mind as uh someone who was also about to propose i was like blasphemy, blasphemy. oh sure 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 like like it was important to you like, to do it yourself <laughs> yeah i was like no no of course the guy should pick out the ring or you know the person proposing the person pick proposing out the surely ring. surely like the other person doesn't have a say what is this which kind of like I'm, like they're the one who's gonna have to wear it, so maybe they should have some say. <laughs> I, I, but to me, it's it's an interesting thing because it's it's maybe not like you know that they that they don't have like a, like an opinion on it or whatever. But like I feel like part of what is the romantic gesture about it is that it is like 
like you're filling in, you know, the other half of the puzzle piece or whatever, like by, by the selection of it, it's almost like what you choose, regardless of who you are and like which person, like which direction it's being purchased for. It's like the very nature of the fact that it is what you thought was right mm -hmm. is what the symbol is like in some way, small shape or form reflecting back. Yes. Is, is the idea that like, you know, Beth wears a ring daily. That's your wife. Um, that you picked out. Right. So I like, yeah, I like the idea that, yeah, they're like, it, like the acceptance of whatever you picked is like sort of symbolic of also saying, yes, I'm going to marry you. Sure. But to that end, if I had proposed and Beth had not liked the ring and she wanted to exchange it, I think I would have been okay with it. I think my real holdup comes from, I feel like the proposal itself, if you picked out the ring, the proposal itself, there is no element of surprise and, to it. And like, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's that's like where um, I think for me for a long time, one of the things that I was always so excited about was the proposal itself. Like I I was excited to do that because it was something that that is sort of like distinctly yours as the proposer. Like like you put together the scenario in which it exists in. Mm -hmm. It's a very and, one way street. <laughs> it is a little bit. It yeah. is a little bit. Um, but I yeah, I think that again, I think it goes back to sort of like the, the romantic element of it, like what you're putting into it, the way that you see it, because no matter what you do, it, it's like it, it is you, you know, like you, right. whatever you execute is exactly what you would do because it is what you did. Right. That's that's sort of the argument. So like I've heard <laughs> the argument that oh proposals are very like one way like the 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 typical scenario is that the guy is proposing to the girl and traditionally they, they sure. have you know so much power in that situation because the, the, everyone's been put on the spot or something like that and i will say that i totally understand that sentiment but i also think that largely while i do think the proposal should be something of a surprise like you should catch them off guard with it the I, answer that like hmm the, the answer to the proposal should not be a surprise. Right, right, right. Like you are not, not going out on a limb right. by you proposing. Should, you should not be surprising them with the act of proposing. You should be surprising them with the timing. Yes. Perhaps. I want to make sure I get this just right because it's a very, I could feel people being very touchy about it. Sure. Like what I mean is you should absolutely have discussed whether or not you want to get married ahead of time. I, like the person should be expecting, shouldn't be surprised that you're proposing. Yes. They should be be surprised by the all of a suddenness right 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 like it. like the <laughs> the ability to catch them off guard right yes right. right so like when i proposed to beth we had definitely talked about getting married <clears throat> we knew we were going to get married but she didn't have any concept of whether or not i had bought a ring when it was going to happen and i think i successfully caught her off guard right right yes. no i think you absolutely did we, mm -hmm. we uh, I, I like a family <laughs> we have it on video we do have it on video <laughs> it was pretty amazing Oh my God. The funny thing about your proposal uh, was that the girl that I was dating at the time, you like, it was like a big secret that you were proposing. Yeah. And so I did not tell her that it was happening. Right. But everybody else in the room were our family members. Yes. And so she became the only person in the room who did not know that it was coming. Besides Beth. Besi besides <laughs> Beth. So I got in a lot of trouble for that one. Mm. That one didn't go over as well. Mm. Well, you live and learn. You live and learn. And I, and, and learn I did. Yes. Um, so no, that was, that was one of the rules for me is that I didn't want to propose in front of a bunch of people um I, I definitely wanted it to be like as intimate as possible mm -hmm. like just just me and her but the big issue was is that like so it's october and i'm like ready to go i dive into both diablo again which is a huge time commitment obviously, obviously. and ring shopping so big time of my life obviously um it takes me long enough to the point where like as i'm narrowing in on what i'm going to you know purchase for her it's so close to christmas all of a sudden and christmas is like you know obviously a big time for all the proposals right. to happen so i was kind of like okay like well i'll let that wait out but then immediately after christmas is um oh my gosh i'm completely blinking on february 14th New Year's, valentine's, valentine's day yeah valentine's day man i almost said thanksgiving <laughs> in mid-february <laughs> uh no <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Turkey. Again. Um, you know, for Valentine's Day. 2.0. Yeah. Um, so anyway, then then you had Valentine's Day. So my big thing was like, as I was ring shopping, it, like literally I was, I was checking out uh, and there was all these notifications popping up on the website, basically being like, heads up, this won't be there by... Um, by Valentine's Day. How much at Thanksgiving again? I have no idea why. Uh, are you <laughs> <What's>, hungry? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think something has been like rewired in my brain. Um, so I remember that it arrived on uh, February 15th. So literally one day after February's Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, <laughs> then I was like, okay, well, I have to wait until I get through all of February because right. that, that month is dedicated to February's Thanksgiving and I can't have that problem. This would be great if we just rebranded Valentine's Day <laughs> as like Friendsgiving. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, everyone come over for turkey. It's going to be great. It's Valentine's Day. It would, right? it would take a, a holiday that seems to make a whole bunch of people sad and make people happy instead. Br yeah, bring together all your friends. Like if the purpose of Thanksgiving largely is to get around, largely you get around with your family. This is like dedicated friends giving. Oh my God, I love this so much more. Yeah. Because yeah, no, I absolutely think it's so funny how like, you know, you, uh, like you don't get to choose your family, but you do get to choose your friends. Yeah. And like all the major holidays are of course always dedicated to spending time with family, which is fantastic. But there's not really like a dedicated time of year oh. to spend with just your friends, like a holiday where a it's like- A holiday for friends. A holiday for friends. Ooh. And Valentine's Day is easily the worst holiday anyway. So you so. don't celebrate Valentine's Day. I, well- I mean, you have to. I, in like a manner of speaking. So again, she, she owns a bridal shop slash flower shop. Uh, right. So it is like one of the other busiest days of the year for, for Alice, where she like gets mm -hmm. up at like 6 a.m. and she's like got 10 people driving delivery cars and you know, it's right. just madness. Just that one day of the year for Valentine's Day. Sure. Um, so typically our tradition of it has been after all the chaos, we go out and have like a big group dinner with the people who help make deliveries and mm. you know, buy a pitcher of beer right. at, the, at the local McAdoo's. I know a couple years ago, I got uh, Beth <clears throat> fries for val Valentine's Day. Dude, that was so adorable mm -hmm. when you did that. Yeah. From from Mission Barbecue. From is that Mission where Barbecue. Yeah, yeah, it's like her, her favorite fries. French fries come from uh, Mission Barbecue. And I just got like a giant order of them. And she was perfectly happy with that. That's amazing. <laughs> but like, yeah, when I see Valentine's Day, like often represented on TV shows and people are like, it's the most romantic day of the year. We have to do something really big. And I'm just like, I, that is just not my Valentine's Day. Not at all. You know? Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's I, I completely agree. So so for me, I was like, okay, get, get through the Valentine's Day madness. I learned Literally, I proposed to Allie on March 1st. Right. So that was like, th that is like the the proof is in the pudding is that like, it was wait until it's over. Wait until after February. But not a second longer. Right, there you go. <laughs> yes. So it worked out really well. Um, but anyway, so ultimately after, you know, an entire like nine months worth of engagement, we're having our Disney wedding, which was set up literally the morning that I was planning to propose. Um, wow. I, do you remember? I, I had a phone call with the people from Disney weddings that morning to see if there was any way we could do like a collaboration right. between the wedding and, and maybe like, you know, give Alice this amazing Disney wedding, um, but then also be able to afford a Disney wedding right. by, by doing something through our YouTube channel. Um, so I remember being on the phone call with the like producer of Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings that morning and she's asking me like, well, so wh when are you guys getting married? And I'm like, well, actually I'm, I'm proposing today. <laughs> and she's like, you're not engaged yet? And I'm like, today, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm, I, I, we, we talked about it. It'll be yeah. fine. Um, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So sort of the, the idea there was, okay, go get engaged. We'll talk later. Right. So we get engaged. It all goes well. Uh, and then basically immediately after I'm like, also I talked to Disney weddings this morning and she's like, what? <laughs> um, which was kind of cool though, because I felt like that it ended up being like somewhat part, like she was very excited about that prospect. So yeah. it ended up kind of sort of being a part of the proposal is that yeah. like, I had also like laid a little bit of groundwork for what the possible wedding could look like. Right. Which was cool. That is fun. Cool. Yeah. That is fun. Um, You'd have gotten that much out of the way. So you said, said she does not like traditional or like traditional wedding things. Right. Right. Because it's like all day, every day. Pretty much. Okay. So uh, I knew we were going to talk about weddings today. So did you come prepared? I came prepared. Oh, goodness. I came prepared. Hold on. You're like a basket of fries on <laughs> February's Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's the main course at February Friendsgiving. <laughs> right, right. Is That's, fries. Is fries. Yeah, it's not turkey. It's just as many tr as many cook like oven trays as you have in that little bottom drawer beneath the oven. Yeah, of course. You have to fill as many as you have. That's the rule with French fries of whatever kind you want. Jay, friend fries. Friend fries. Fr oh! Friend fries. We're inventing a holiday. We are. On the fly. Right On the fry. <laughs> <laughs> right before your ears, people. <laughs> Okay, so however many trades you happen to own right now, maybe you have like five or six. That's a lot more work for you, but hey, these are the rules. These are the rules. I'm not making up friends giving. Yeah, maybe you I mean. should, uh, maybe you should give away some of those pay-ins after this. <laughs> yeah, give them to your friends. They'll love it for sure. 
Uh, that's how many trays worth of french fries that you have to make. And I can see you feverishly working on your iPad and also trying to make words happen at this the same time. This iPad does not have Google Chrome on it. And I was trying to open a link I put in the show notes and it was like, you have to download a browser. And I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> so hang on while I download Google so, Chrome real quick. So hold on. I'm going to go through. I've pulled what I have here. What I'm okay. looking at okay. is a website and it's just a list of wedding traditions that need to go away for good. Okay. So these are just the real, I think it's probably going to be a list of all the extremely common wedding traditions. And okay. So let me just say, I didn't make this list and I don't even know everything that's on it. I sort of skimmed through it um whether or not we think they are good or bad does not mean anything these are strong opinions about weak things strong opinions about weak things and, and if you did any of these things in your wedding or you think they're awesome and plan on doing them good for you i hope you have a great day absolutely so the the yeah I, i'm going to say that my entire basis for all this is that even uh like alice has completely redefined my scope as to what <clears throat> a wedding would have been been like yeah because b because of her unique position in the world mm -hmm. so i think that there are things that i would have been jazzed about but because of her unique perspective on it yes absolutely i think that is that is where i'm coming from before we go into this my prediction would be that any of these things that are things that like traditions that need to go away my prediction going into it would be that we are not doing any of them okay so i'm curious to see how we do okay the first one on it is uh matching ring sets between bride and groom match i don't even know what a matching ring set would be so like if she has like a gold band with a diamond on it then you're you would have a gold band that matched with her ring like your rings would look look the same together no like they're a part of the same bed they do not they do not they do not All actually right. I, that was yeah I, even her wedding band and um her engagement ring are both a knife edge but one of them is like diamond crusted and the other one isn't mm. crusted i don't i'm sure that's not the word yeah paved pa diamond I, paved i think diamond paved is actually the, the correct terminology sound much better it sounds like you ran over it with a steamroller which i did oh. obviously yes okay then paved is exactly <laughs> the right word when i made it from a former nickel <laughs> Actually, true story. I remember seeing one of those viral uh, Instagram videos once upon a time of a guy who took like a, I think pre-1955 silver dollar was actually made primarily of silver. Oh. And he like drilled a hole through it and like hammered it down and milled it like into like a, a men's like wedding band. Oh. And it was like one of those things where I was like, I want to learn how to do that. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. He put that in a video? He, it was just like one of those viral Instagram videos oh, okay. where like the guy, it's all like all in uh, like triple speed or whatever. And the guy right. like holds it up to the camera and then like drills a hole and hammers it down with like a spoon or something. Mm. That would be one of those where it's like, it's so cool. But I, if it was me doing it, I'd be like, oh, am I going to get in trouble? Because like, isn't like destroying US currency actually like, illegal? It might be. Yeah, it well, might be. I wonder goodness. if like the age of the coin helps, like because it's like maybe out of circulation or no longer in production. Mm. That possibly could be your loophole. I have no idea. Total aside, one YouTube channel that I've always wanted to do is literally just taking any viral Instagram post and trying to recreate it. Oh. And just like, you know, like all the little hacks where people like take bottle caps and turn them into like hair dryers. Right. Like that's, you one, know. That, that's gotta be one of them. Someone's done that. I want to, I want to like watch it and then try to do like the nailed it video where I attempt to recreate. You just want to make nailed it. Yeah. yeah on basically life, on hacks on hacks. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, does this work or not? Anyway, yeah. continue. All right, read, read the All right, list. So the next no, one, no matching wedding bands. The next one is uh, the tradition of the bride's parents paying for the wedding. No. Yeah, I don't even... I This one, even as a kid, I think I was like, I don't understand why this is a thing, and it seems weird. It does seem weird. Yeah. It seems super weird, um, because, I, I mean, we have, we have had help um, from all all walks of, like, our family, like, from different directions. Mom and dad right. have helped, her mom has helped, you know, all the different things. Um, but, no, I, I would say that we, Alice and I, have paid for, like, 85% of the wedding entirely on our own. Mm, all right. Yeah, I, it seems like you're both getting married. Should either both sides should fund or you should personally fund it or yes. like it seems very unfair <laughs> that if for some reason like if you ended up having three or four daughters yeah like suddenly, mom and like, dad got out scotch yeah, free yeah, on like this our one our parents had three sons and it's like yeah i have i'm going to have three sons right like, all right no weddings I, <laughs> I look i'm gonna have three sons and i am against this rule right 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 <laughs> you know? no i know for sure um that being said mom yeah mom and dad have been <laughs> remarkably generous so mm, yeah okay. they've done great so yeah that that one i can i'm okay with that one going away uh 
white dresses only for the bride's gown. White dresses only. Well, this is a weird one because like there's only one dress, right? Well, I think like suggest this. Let's see. Let me, let me. Mm -hmm. I think just for brides who don't want to wear a white dress. Is that okay? Is that the question? That's okay. Yeah. Is Alice, I, mm, you haven't seen the dress. I, I haven't seen the dress yet. You haven't yet. seen the dress? I, I am, I am fairly certain that it is in fact white. I, yeah, I'm not, I, personally, I have seen the dress. Ooh. Personally, I don't know if she would be okay with me telling you that it is white. Yeah, I um, think that's okay. <laughs> I yes. feel like she would have told you if it wasn't, um, because, but, okay, so it sounds like you haven't broken all of them. I, I, now, I don't care if people don't get married in a white dress. Beth did. I don't think that one has to go. No, I, yeah, that, to me, that does, that seems like a little bit more of a, like, total preference call. Like, I, I would not in any way be upset if I attended a wedding and the person was not wearing a white dress. Right. Like, that, I, I wouldn't, I would no. be like, Oh, wow. Like that's a, that's like such a like unique way to customize your wedding. Right. I think um, it's, it, I don't know if it comes out of like a tradition, like if the white used to stand for something and that's why people wore white dresses once upon a time. But to me, like the white dresses, it's like, it's just part of the wedding. It doesn't really mean other, anything other than you're the bride. Sure, like, sure. Like it doesn't stand for anything else to me other than bride. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's, I, I definitely, I have no other attached symbolism with the color white as it pertains to the dress other than that just generally is the bride and also like that one, aunt who like made a decision <laughs> yeah. Oh, you wore a white. <laughs> to okay. a wedding. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. That being said, one thing that I w desperately wanted that I found there was a surprising um, m a minimum amount of customization on is the groom's tux. Like, oh, I, oh, yes. This I, is this is a monopoly held by like men's warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there's there's so I mean you can basically wear like a white tux, a blue tux, a black tux, or like some combination of like those elements. But like there there's not that many different ways to really super customize your appearance, which was something I, like truly and honestly I wanted to have a full sequin jacket. You did? Yes. I was wow. like I feel like it will be so extra and so spectacular and so cool and. Allie was like, no. Absolutely not, huh? Spoiler alert, I bought one. <laughs> really? I'm not wearing it to the wedding, but I will wear it sometime that night. I, I'm so excited. I did yes. not know this. Yes, yes. I think I, if I had to guess the reason for that would be because un, because typically all of the groomsmen are wearing the same tuxedo, yes. including the groom. Right. And as a result, while I think in general, if you wanted to have an extremely custom tuxedo, that would be no problem, but it would be very difficult to get you and all of your groomsmen the exact same one. Right. And then it might look kind of odd if all of a sudden yours was like, like a really nice black tuxedo compared to all the other black rental tuxedos, which also, by the way, I've seen all my groomsmen in them and they look fantastic. So they do look good. Um, yeah, that's the thing. There's that. Yeah, it's, it's hard to look too bad in a tuxedo. It's true. It's, yeah. That's what that's what mom said when when she saw a photo. She was like, "I don't know if there's any any more attractive outfit for a man to wear than a, a black tuxedo." So, <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is going to be on the list. It wouldn't surprise me. But then, do you think men wearing all the same? tux is something that should go. That's, that's something where I would say I did a little bit of my own, like very inexperienced Pinterest thing. Mm -hmm. and, and there are some, some uh, wedding parties where like the groom will wear a different color. Yeah. And I've seen that and I think it looks cool. Yeah. Uh, but it, it would totally just be your own preference call. Right. Um, I, I like the thing I ultimately went with was black tuxedos, which I think is just classic. Yeah. I, I think that showing our kids eventually like our wedding photos, I felt reasonably protected from having done something weird. Okay. <laughs> like, like my kids can't make fun of me someday for wearing a black tuxedo. Ben, do not underestimate what- The power of children. What, what the children will make fun of you for. Sure, You sure. cannot avoid it. There's no, you just have to lean into what you want and not worry about that. Well, and the thing is, in, in the fullness of time, the funny stories will rise to the top no matter what. Like, mom always tells us the story of the time that dad gave her a truck full of gravel for her birthday. Oh. And, and it's like, I'm, I'm sure, you know, over the 25-something the years they've been married, he's done a fantastic job of delivering many thoughtful gifts, but one year. Right. But I, I would even be willing to bet knowing mom, she said, we need gravel more than we need a new, like, new handlebars for my oh, bicycle right. or something. Sure. And it was an agreed-upon decision 
decision, but it still makes for a hilarious it story. It is a funny story that he just has to be the butt of that joke. Yes. For forever. all time. Sorry, Dad. If you give someone a dump truck for full of gravel for February Friendsgiving. <laughs> no, that's a great that's a Friendsgiving gra- gift. Friendsgiving. Stones, it's very well known that stones are, are perfectly acceptable exchange. Non-precious stones. No, no exclusively. Exclusively, exclusively non-precious, non-precious stones. Everyone should find a rock <laughs> do, before. Do not get it wrong, people. <laughs> If you bring a nice rock to Friendsgiving... I will be upset. (laughs) Okay, so let let me run down the traditions now for February Friendsgiving. It's on the 14th. It's on the 14th. It's all of your friends. All of your friends. You serve French fries on as many oven trays as you happen to own. French fries. French fries. I'm sorry. And everyone exchanges non-precious rocks. Rocks. Yes. (laughs) I'm into this holiday. Isn't it the best? (laughs) Okay. I can't wait to celebrate. All right. We're not even that far away right now. Not even, yeah. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to, I feel like we're going to have to do it. We're going to have a full head of steam going into this year's February Friendsgiving. Okay, so the next thing that has to Go or stay as a wedding tradition are weddings on summer Saturdays. We are getting married on a January Monday. Yeah, I got married on a (laughs) Saturday of the summer. This, uh, I think... People are saying, I, I don't know, this says couples don't have to tie the knot on Saturday in June, even though this is highly traditional. And it's like, I think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think people get married in June because they're like, we should get married in June because weddings are in June. Yes. I think people get married in June because that's when it's, when people have time off. Time off. And and it's hard to compete with the fact that the weather is just more cooperative. Right. And yeah. Like, you know, you don't want to get, if, if you get married in like mid-March or something, then you run the risk of it just being like a dreary day or you can't have an right. outdoor wedding. Yeah. Um, that being said, though, I actually think that that's maybe a bit of a dated trope. The most popular wedding day in 2020 is currently October 10th. Really? Because it is 10 10 2020. Oh. And it's a Saturday. That works and out really well. Not to mention. <clears throat> Uh, fall weddings have fall become weddings. huge. Because, super trendy yes, right now. Super trendy. Move over summer. Exactly. Too hot. Yep. So I think I think that hot. one's already on its way out. <laughs> what do you got next for me? Let's see. I'm trying to find ones that I, that I feel are fun. Some of these. Let's see. Not seeing the bride before the wedding. Okay. That is one that I will say I stuck to. So one of the big things that Disney loves to do for their Disney weddings is a first look. Yeah. And they'll have this moment like where they'll like have the groom facing the other way and you're not really supposed to know like when the like bride is walking up and she like comes up and like taps you on the shoulder right or you can like go back to back and you're literally standing like in a outdoor public space right. like like right behind each other and then you do like a turn yeah and like i think that that moment especially if you're capturing it on video can be absolutely gorgeous um this is one where Allie is walking herself down the aisle yeah so she does not have um like anybody with her that is a moment that i have wanted to preserve since the very beginning because i know she's gonna walk around the corner and I'm going to cry. Oh, and I know you're she's going to be lights too. out. And yeah, so to me, that was the I because we also did the thing where we did not see each other on the day of the wedding until she walked down the aisle. Right. And to me, like the, it, we had like this staircase she was going to walk down. Right. And so she was going to like come around the corner and then be at the top of the staircase. And I was like, I want I, I love the idea of that being the first time I saw her that day, like in her dress and stuff. Right. And we did do like a, a letter exchange where we like passed each other a letter like around a corner yeah Yeah. or behind a door or something and we have some pretty funny pictures from that that were pretty good but uh that one i mean i guess i i I don't know i don't i I guess i don't really it it wouldn't bother me if you're like oh yeah we just met up that morning for breakfast or whatever sure well and and she talked about that because she desperately wants to work out that morning to like like burn off some of like her her just like nerves and stuff for the day and she did say that to me she was like she was like we could get together in the morning and work out together so that like we could do that it's like yeah one thing before the wedding and that, I, w- I will say that this one was one that i stuck to pretty hard that i'm like i'm very much looking forward to especially because we also spend so much time together that i am excited for the fact that we will have spent a night apart from one another and then like like basically a full day leading up to the wedding so mm-hmm. there, there will be like i mean not a whole lot of distance we've certainly gone longer periods of time without seeing each other but it'll be like so refreshing just like get to see her all at once and in that moment right like, that that was something that i was so excited Excited about in particular so that that's more of a me thing than than a tradition thing okay all right next one the song here comes the bride we're not doing it not doing it not doing it i can't even remember if we did it i think we did a like a modern version of it i think beth always dreamed about 
walking down to the, I think we did do it. I think Beth dreamed about like walking down the out of the song, but she had a very specific one she wanted. See, this is exactly where we, we preface this conversation with saying like, it's okay if you do these things. It's like, ultimately, yeah, that's that's the big oh, thing. Oh, it's your wedding. It's your wedding. Do whatever like, you want. But like, I, I want, it makes me happy to hear when people have like preferences like that because right. it's so cool. It's like, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that that's something that, that was so important to you. Um, yeah, no, we, uh, that was one in particular that, that we decided not to do. Um, um, and I think what she has landed on, in case it, it hasn't changed, is A Million Dreams from the Greatest Showman soundtrack sang by Pink. Oh, okay. Uh, is the song that she's coming into. It's a song that is very much about like dreamers, which I think is very much both of our personalities. Mm. And so it fits really nicely with us. So that's, she is walking into that and I am walking into um, an acoustic version of Go the Distance from Hercules. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, here's one. Uh, bride side and groom side, like seating. Oh no. Yeah. Who cares. No, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't even know what you meant by that. I was like, <laughs> like teams. That seems like the opposite of the point of the day. Yeah. That's what the, this website has a sign on it that says today, two families become one. So please pick a seat, not a side. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, again, I don't even remember if we did this. I think we had maybe a few seats reserved for, uh, like grandparents or something. Sure, we but have I, that too. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's because they are specifically walked in and like sat down. Um, right. But it, and and that's purely because there is a, a need for the assistance. Right. A little bit. Uh, so that's that is why we have that. It is more of a function of how to do it. And, and there's a little honorary stuff with like walking, you know, the the parents of the bride and groom mm. into the into the center. Okay. All right. Here, I'm interested on this one. Okay, lay it on me. The smashing cake. No way. No way. You're not doing it. <laughs> no way. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um. The cake. I think was one of our bigger afterthoughts yeah. of the whole experience. I think it is going to be delicious. Uh. We ha we have we will have a three tier cake. Um. That has let's see here lavender cake on the top and bottom Ooh. with a lemon curd and blueberry filling is what the the consistency of the top and bottom layer is and then the middle one we went a little more classic it is the it's like basic disney's yellow cake but the icing on that one is like the gray stuff right from you know like the beauty and the beast like try the yeah. gray stuff it's delicious like the guy who invented the gray stuff is the guy who like it's literally that oh wow so yeah that's pretty cool it's, that's it's a cool. fun little easter egg at the wedding it is a fun easter egg yeah so um but no, no, we're not doing the cake smash. They, they offer you to do like the custom uh, like knife and serving. Um, I don't even know what, what it's called. Like a pie shaped spatula. Yeah. What is that called? Yeah, like, I don't know, like a serving Square thing. triangle. Serving triangle. <laughs> <laughs> so triangle. They, they offer you a knife and serving triangle, <laughs> which we were like, no, we, we are uninterested in having, um, because how often do you serve like nice cake? Right. Never. Never. But you can have like your your name engraved in the whole thing um that they, they are beautiful they look really cool but it, we were like that of, of all the things we would spend money on that is not one of them that is not the one i know that beth was very much against the cake smash at our wedding did you do it anyway oh no oh oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let me you looked really serious all of a sudden i i joked with her the whole time that i was gonna do it anyway that i did not i oh was just gosh. like made her nervous the whole time but uh, i had no intention of doing it um this one i think these are some of these things on this list i feel like i feel like anything that is a wedding tradition this list is attacking and i feel like so, so many of these are just like they're it's just like they're they're traditions because people have done them obviously that's what traditions are but i don't see like good like i think I think the reason people do them is because they're fun to do like sure most no traditions make sense you know you just do them because that's oh, yeah. the point at christmas we literally go and take a tree from outside and put it in our house yeah right and it's and it's like like everybody thinks of it as normal because it's what we've done forever yeah but like it's sort of an odd thing to do yeah i think the smith the cake smashing i know our youngest brother did do it they were all about it they were and, but, and it was hilarious but it was so fitting for yeah. their type of like yeah. their relationship with each other yeah all of these things come down to the individual people it's just whatever you want to do yes whatever you want to do oh okay you know are you guys going to this is saving cake so the tradition is to save a piece of your wedding cake and eat it on the one your anniversary oh i don't know the answer to that question i know i do think that so i say if we have a three-tier cake maybe makes it sound a little more fantastical than it is i'm pretty sure that the top piece is <clears throat> like 
Like you could probably eat it in a single sitting. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small piece of cake. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is possible that they keep that top piece for you. Um, we have absolutely no plan for returning it to our home. <laughs> you do have a bit of a, like you'd have to transport it home with you as y well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which like, I remember instead of going to beach week after graduating high school, we went down to the Florida Keys mm -hmm. and we caught, you know, like sea urchins and stuff for our aquariums at home. Yeah. And we had like styrofoam coolers and oh. air pumps. And, oh, it was a nightmare. Well, I loved it. It was great. But um, so we drove all the way back from the Florida Keys to, to Roanoke, Virginia with like these rattling styrofoam coolers that mm -hmm. were like rubbing against each other and squeaking the whole time. Oh man, fantastic. But yeah, I, I have not put any of that kind of uh, thought or energy into the idea of how I would return a cake to my home like six days after the wedding because yeah. we're staying in Disney afterwards. Plus then you have to keep it in your freezer for a year. Right. Oh goodness. Yeah. We have my, a small freezer. I, do, I know we did not do this. Um, we I don't think we have a piece of, I, I don't think we have a piece of cake sitting somewhere in storage that I'm aware of. You have moved since you've been I married. Have moved, so. Yeah, since we've been married. So you'd think I would know this. I don't think we did. And uh, from, I, I know people who have done it. And I think on most reports, people have just reported that the cake is year old cake. It does not taste good. It's anymore. not that good. It's okay. like, this is a, so yeah, I mean, go for it. I'm, I understand. I, I must feel like if you're going to keep it, just keep the cake. Like don't even eat it. Just, you know, here's a piece of cake from that day. I'm, I'm curious as to why they would say that that's a tradition that needs to go because I don't, I have no idea who that harms other than. I don't, none of these harm anyone. Sure, oh, sure, 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 sure. For the most part, I don't think. Oh, uh, okay. Here's one. Uh, toasts, like from the Maid of Honor and Best Man. Oh, we are doing that one. Oh, yeah. Why, why would you want to get rid of this? I don't understand. This, what, this list is so anti all things. <laughs> it's like, at, at some point in time, literally, what is it suggesting you do? Go to a <laughs> yeah. pizza hut and have... <laughs> That's right. Just have yeah. a party. Right. Or do you exactly. even have a ceremony? Yeah. Yeah. Right, no. It's I like... do's. Exchanging of rings. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. Yes. And they we're the courthouse, people. Let's just abolish the whole thing. Right, yeah. <laughs> We're going to exchange uh, uh, bicycles instead. Yeah. No, actually, Allie has talked about that before, too, in the, in the process of selling um, bridal gowns. She says, like, she she's like, I do sell... Um, ceremonial garb is literally what she calls it. Like if you were to think about that, like in, in the context of like a smaller village or whatever, yeah. like she would be the person in town who sells something that is very important to so many people, but actually also like reason or somewhat non-essential to the, to the comings and goings and the existence of that village. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of interesting to think that that is like what that she peddles ceremonial garb. Ceremonial garbs. Yeah. Okay. Garbs. I, we'll, we'll make this one the last one just because I think this list goes on for a long time. Okay. I don't think you guys are doing this one. The tossing of the bouquet slash garter. Oh my gosh, we're not doing it. You're not doing either. I'm not doing either. Oh. No. Oh my gosh. As so I am I am 30 and most of my friends are now married, which means I've been to a whole bunch of weddings where I've had to participate in these things. Uh and the the bouquet toss I'm more okay with maybe because I didn't have to participate in those I'm not sure the garter toss has always made me like kind of uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I don't know why like it's always one of these things where like you're like taking something off of like one of your best friends now wife and then like flinging it at them right and I, I've I don't know I've never been able to like really wrap my head around it I remember the first time I was involved with one of these I really didn't even know what it was it, yeah I feel like I grew grew Growing up, you hear about the the bouquet toss all the time right. as a pretty standard wedding tradition. I, I too entered adulthood never having even heard of this. Yeah, no, I had. And it, to me, the garter toss feels like someone wanted to come up with a male equivalent, like like something for the for the, the, the for other the, way. Yeah, yeah. something so, on the other side. Th the idea, of course, being basically like whoever catches it is like you know it's like good luck towards them being married mm -hmm. next. That's yeah, that's, that's the, the idea. idea is if you catch the bouquet, you're next to be married. That's, okay. that's the good luck. That's the superstition. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, no. So I remember the first time that this happened because the other thing about a garter is they don't throw well at Ooh, yeah, all. No. It's it's like a flimsy piece of fabric. Yeah. But I remember the guy, he stood up and he sort of did like a rubber band, like where you take two fingers and like stretch it back yeah. and like shot it into the crowd. And I caught it and I was like... <sighs> Well, okay. It's like, <laughs> and I was like, you know, like I put like a fist in the air and was like, woo, 
I did it. Uh, but then I was like, I, I didn't, I felt yeah. uncomfortable Kid, holding it. I'm like, you want this back? Do I like, should I give it to you? Like, do I, do I put it in my coat? What like, I, I right, yeah. you're just thinking about it right now. It's making me uncomfortable. You it's uncomfortable. like, yeah, I don't, I never knew what to do. Um, so that was one. And I actually dreaded it at weddings. Like it was the type of thing where I would like try to go get a drink or like run to the bathroom. Like if I knew that it was like coming up oh. and sure enough, there is like a person at every wedding whose job it is to make sure you're wrangling up all the unmarried men for this particular oh, thing. Yeah. Someone's and there. Someone is there. And it's like, it's the type of thing where they're like, Ben, we need you for the, for the garter toss. And it's like, you don't need me for anything. <laughs> I am not important to this day. Afraid not. Afraid not. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I'll, I will give a speech. If you need me to give a speech, I'll cry <laughs> for sure. Um, but that's, that's, that's the only involvement. Yeah. So we are not doing, that was sort of the thing is that I think that was like the only real like major, like me putting my foot down on like a, I don't want to do this right type of thing. Uh, and so I think with that, we just sort of decided we wouldn't do the bouquet toss as well, because it would be like, can you do one without the other? I, I suppose you could, but we didn't. Right. Well, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I am. Um... So looking forward to your wedding and whatever different unique things you will be doing at it. Yeah, I hope it I hope it goes well. Uh, the, the last thing that we can talk about here before we close out today's pop is there is this element of a Disney wedding. And this is not something that I'm promising or expecting or hoping for or really anything. But like there is this thing that you see, especially like on the Disney wedding TV shows where like Disney like adds a little magic uh, to the, the wedding magic, the Disney magic. And this is something <gasps> that I think because I'm having a Disney Disney wedding, a lot of people have approached me because they've seen like the television show before. They're like, what's your Disney magic going to be, do you think? And I'm like, I don't think it's going to happen <laughs> personally. But the question is, I keep wondering if somehow, some way Mickey Mouse will show up at my wedding. Oh, that'd be cool. Well, I, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Have they talked to you? They have not talked to me about any Disney magic. I'm looking to see if you're, if the corners of your mouth are like flicking up with a small, I'm lying to you grin. No, no. I, I would have definitely had some thoughts about what I want it to be. I, you know, it's, it's exciting because you know, people do talk about it, but it's like, well, certainly, obviously they do that for the TV show. I know. Whatever. And I think that that's what it comes yeah. down to is like the TV show. And, and that's like the, the distance between what a Disney wedding can be like is huge. Right. But like when you tell people you're having a Disney wedding, if they are even remotely aware of the television show, they're like, oh wow, this is gonna be crazy. Mm. And it's like, but you can go and have like a three person wedding at Disney where you just book book the venue, right. someone marries you, mm -hmm. they 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 put us out a corner for you with a bottle of champagne and, and that's like and the, the whole thing. Right. Um, so I think my, my wedding planner, when we first met him, when he first started, there was like this whole thing with Disney World in the early 90s where I think uh, in particular, Japanese couples were coming to Walt Disney World to get married right. like it was like a, a huge trend or a fad or whatever and I think he said in like his first it was either like his first month or 60 days he had done like 207 weddings whoa some insane amount that of is so that's like multiple weddings every single day well there's so many places you can do it you know like that's the other thing everybody thinks you're getting married in front of the castle oh right which is not that it, it is so expensive right and you have to do it at midnight because right. you have to they're not shutting the park down for your wedding absolutely ever. not there's no way in the world you could spend enough money compared to the the attendees of a park at any given point right. in time so they're never closing it for anybody um so literally if you ever see a wedding that took place in front of the castle it happened at somewhere between midnight and two in the morning right when no one was in the park right except you which is kind of cool too that is kind of cool that's that an opportunity cool. in of itself, have you so. okay so you mentioned disney magic have you like I, when they talk about it for the weddings it's like as if disney is supplying some sort of crazy unknown event that you don't know is happening right right um but typically when you go to the parks one of the big things disney is trying to manufacture is that feeling of the disney magic in some way shape or form like to give you a positive experience right and in, a, in an unexpected way. So like, I think, yeah, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Like for our dad, for example, mm -hmm. we we had the chance to bring our parents to Disney as adults, which was kind of a cool like inverse on them taking us as right. children to to kind of return the favor. And dad, who is a bit of an outdoorsman, you know, he's like, he, he likes fly fishing, you yeah. know, riding his mountain bike, kayaking, stuff like that. I think for him, he was sort of like, all the ways I could go and spend my vacation. I don't think that Disney is necessarily how I would do <laughs> right. it. Right. Um, 
But I think we get down there and there was this one occasion where dad went off and he was asking somebody for directions or something. And he started telling him like our little story and how we got to be there. And they gave him like three free fast passes. For everyone in the family. For everyone in the family. And this was Disney magic for dad. Yeah. It was like this specialized experience that they gave him where dad got to come over. And I think feel like he just got like to contribute so much to our, our trip, which it did. I mean, we had, we had set plans for the rest of the day and it was like, everyone has brand new fast passes. Well, I have to change our plans. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. So the, the Disney magic really like, you know, it, it happens. Yeah. It happens. But anyway, you were going to ask. You said, oh, I was going to say, yeah. Have you, um, in any of your other times at Disney World had a Disney magic moment? Oh, like in the parks? Yeah, like in the parks. Oh man, fascinating question. Um, I think similar to that, probably the only thing that's that's happened. No, we have had something happen. Yeah. But I think it's somewhat because of who we are. Okay. Um, so obviously like we create a, most of our content. I'm sure most people listening right now know us from the YouTube channel, Super Carlin Brothers, where we do a lot of Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, right. Marvel, all that type of stuff. Um, and there was a day where we were, sitting down to like a dinner at the um you were with me where were we oh, at? the jungle cruise the jungle cruise okay. yes and the waiter comes over and he's like completely in character you know he's doing all the puns he's cracking jokes he's completely hilarious the whole time he sits us down and he goes like you know this this guy's gonna be your waiter hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys in another or i'll see you in another life brother and <laughs> it like that's how we close every super carlin brothers video and i was like <gasps> <laughs> he watches the channel like it, it like, was pretty like, fun we like we all gasped and we looked over and he sort of gave this like look over his shoulder and gave us a grin and it was yeah. like i don't know that was really that was one of those special moments but that's not something that i think any disney cast member can just deliver to every guest right for sure that was a special case yeah what about you uh yeah i think on our last trip we had i felt i felt like the i got to feel a little bit of the disney magic on like several occasions um well one was certainly when dad came over and was like guys guess what and i was like whoa that was so cool um but we were there with my son luke and it was so cool i think having a child there is a whole different uh experience because they get to experience things and you kind of get like get to like watch them experience it yes it's so it's such a different thing um but so when he met um mickey and minnie that was like really cool like i was so nervous about whether because i feel like a lot of kids are either uh really excited about the costume characters and some are terrified sure sure <laughs> but he was super excited and i remember like uh like that minnie gave him like like a little kiss on the cheek or whatever and then he gave her a kiss and i was like oh my god i don't know it was like really special oh uh, and then we were at the aquarium uh in are you teared Epcot. up no i'm not tearing up you are <laughs> a little bit uh well everything Aww. with luke is so great all the time and we were at the aquarium and we were at the manatee tank and he had like he was sort of staring at it and there wasn't anything to see and he like turned around to look at me and then i look up and there's the the manatee is like right in front of him all of a sudden uh -huh. he turns around and he goes whoa and it was just like it was like oh you get to like see him have this crazy experience i mean it was like looking at it right you know? right, it was, right. Like, so cool yeah that was really fun and then the other one was uh while we were at the animal kingdom they had this thing with the parrots Yes. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh yeah. So when Beth and I, the first time we ever went to Disney World together, we got there at Rope Drop, which is like when the park opens and they have them, like the macaws come in and do this like trained flight pattern. And I remember thinking that was the coolest thing. And so that when we brought mom and dad down, we were like, okay, we have to get to Animal Kingdom at Rope Drop. We're gonna do this cool thing with the parrots. Like you got to, we got to be there for that. Right. And we're all like rushing out there to get there and we get there. And I don't know if there was like extra magic hours or something that day, but we thought we were getting there at Rope Drop. The park was already open. It was like, right. oh, we missed it. But then we're just like walking through the park at random and all of a sudden look over and there is this col giant collection of parrots, just a part of this like bird show thing. And we walk around and like, oh, we should go see this real quick. And like, we got there like five seconds before it happened. And all of a sudden they're like, all right, everyone, this is a great time. If you're gonna stand right here, pull out your phones and like maybe set it to slow motion or something. And I mean, we literally walked up. They said that I pulled it out, hit the button and this like 30 parrots just flew right at. Like, and they're all yeah. different colors. They're all different colors. It was like, it was like the coolest piece of video I've ever filmed ever. Yeah. And I was so excited because I think I'd been telling dad about this particular thing all week. And I think he was so excited to see the parrots when we got there and then we just it and then he happened to like walk up with me so it also happened to him and it was really cool and yeah those are my Disney magic moments from the last time we were there. That's amazing. That's yeah. so many good ones. So many good yeah. ones. Yeah, that was a great trip. It was a good trip. It was a good trip. So I'm excited to go back, see what else what else happens. Luke is 
all about Mickey Mouse as well. And he's been watching a lot of Toy Story uh, and Cars lately. So I have a feeling he's going to be really freaking out at the amount of Mickey Mouse he's about to He's, <laughs> he's going to be a bit more tuned like, in this time. Like last time he was sort of like, oh, that's a cool thing in a costume. Now he's going to be like, oh my God, you're Mickey Mouse. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so Luke Luke is like two and change, and this will be his third trip to Disney World. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poor kid. <laughs> we have a cool job. There's some, there's some weird series of circumstances for sure. Oh my gosh. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Popcorn Culture, the Popcast. Yeah, the Pop. Let us know what if you've been to Disney World or Disneyland or any of the parks. Uh, what what Disney magic moments you have experienced? Because I always love hearing about them, whatever they are for people. It's always so unique. I know, I know. It's so it's so like special yeah. in particular. The other thing that I would love to know is out of all of the Disney wedding tropes that we ran through, are there any that you are or just per- wedding tropes at all? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there anything that you're particularly adamant about or not adamant about? One last thing I'll throw in there because I was looking for a few before we hopped on here. One One thing I saw was people like a bingo card and one of the bingo squares was having to address your own thank you card is like a thing that people have people do like so ultimately like you know you bring like a wedding gift or whatever to the wedding yeah and then eventually the bride and groom send you a thank you card for it i guess the idea there is that they literally have like a stack of envelopes and they have you fill out like your address on the envelope so that you don't have to do it like later later so they can that it can be mailed to you yes oh (laughs) if i was like that is so lazy (laughs) i could i I was like how could this be on a bingo card? Is this like I've never had someone ask me to do that at a I, wedding. I've never been to a wedding where I had to do that. It, it's funny that you say lazy because in my mind, I'm like, that's so productive. No way. <laughs> so you're for it. You're for it. Okay. Well, that's fair. That's fair. Like we said, there are no wrong answers. It's your wedding. It's your wedding. It's your day. Do whatever you want. Have a blast. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.